All right, we have come to the end of the uh, Rudsta Mega Modified Cab. And as you can see, it's completely done. And uh, it's looking pretty good, I think. Uh, let's talk a few things here that I've done to it. Uh, get some uh, little fun facts, if you will. All right. This cabinet, this whole cabinet, seven foot five inches to the top. She's tall. Now, your first shelf height from this point to here is 17 and three quarters of an inch. Okay. The space between here and the top is 23 and a half inches, or 24 if you're going to kind of go up behind the lip. But you really don't want that. Okay. Now, for people who have detoffs, your detoff height is just about, I don't know, maybe three quarters of an inch below this shelf. So for people who are used to putting things on detoffs, that's about the height you would have. Except for now, it's behind glass. So you can almost imagine this as being two detoffs side by side and stacking on top, but it be in a glass case so they give you an idea of what we got going on here uh, which makes this ideal for bunnies uh, standing tall and uh, down here now as you can see and I think I made this point earlier in the video now that's a quarter inch figure now she's not a bunny as you can see she'll go in there she will go in there. So, that will go in there, no problem. So, bunnies that are kind of leaning over a little bit uh, easily will go in there. Um, speaking about that, <laughs> oddly enough, my first bunny came in. <laughs> so, I got a quarter scale bunny here. We'll open that later. Uh, as well as some other things that come in. And another box here. All that will have to open up later. Alright, so you still got your typical uh, deal with the Rudsta cab. 13 and a half inch deep. The shelves are 13 and 3 quarters. Or 13 and 3 eighths, excuse me. And of course, uh, 30 and a half inches wide. And now, uh, <clears throat> some of the things I've done. Uh, aside from raising that, I've taken this off. It was up here. You're not going to be able to reach up there. So I've taken it off by using a uh, 3 16 drill bit. And just hit onto that rivet. Gently. Don't push too hard. It'll come right off. Uh, and with that, I basically used Gorilla uh, double-faced uh, tape. Worked great, no problem. Now I only like one because I find it too, to me, is kind of distracting to the eye because you could always go like that. So I don't plan on putting a second one on. Matter of fact, I may even take this one off of this. But now these pieces here are held on with a magnet. And as you can see, they're they're on there pretty tight. Even you know, <clears throat> you can pull those off easily enough. Uh, if you have to move this cabinet around, you're not going to be able to move this big monstrosity. You're going to have to break this down into two. Uh, so <clears throat> that's why I didn't zap these in with screws and all that. So these will come off. You take your screws out. Uh, break your splice in the back, electrical splice. Drop this cabinet and move it in two pieces. So um, <clears throat> the bottom, uh, we put the skirt around the bottom. Uh, for two reasons. Uh, keeps the legs from shifting, uh, which gives uh, stability to the bottom end because you're going to have all this weight. All this weight is pushing down on these bars. Um, and to keep, uh, keep the legs steady, uh, I put that uh, half inch uh, by uh, half inch <laughs> grade uh, half inch <laughs> cabinet grade plywood around there to lock those legs in okay then we also uh, heavied up we put little bracings in here uh, to make this shelf 
able to hold a lot more weight if you choose as well as we did the bottom uh, both those you don't have to do that's just something I did personal choice uh, what else have we done here um, yeah we did raise this up with these little blocks you'll see in the video how I did that uh, I think ultimately if I were to do this again I would probably just bring a bar across the face and attach that way um, screwing in into the this frame this way uh, you really can't go the other way because with the swinging of these doors it doesn't really allow, allow for a lot of space your most space that you'll be able to get a screw would be this way so that would be the way I would do that uh, I did run a screw into the wall to stabilize this and, and I would suggest if anybody that you know is going to build something like this you're going to want to stabilize that's a lot of height rocking around so find a sp uh, space along your wall where there's a stud and uh, figure out where it's going to be in your cabinet drill a hole pop it and uh, run run a big old screw into the into the stud to keep that thing from moving uh, yeah I guess that's about it we'll take a closer look alright let's take a look at this you can see down there the uh, trim I put on it and all the cabinets still got the same stuff in there as before uh, got a few of those little uh, little body big heads as I call them I think they're kind of cool <laughs> everything's pretty much the same ain't nothing changed and as you can see this piece of trim that comes around here uh, it's just there to you know neaten it up and uh, it is all uh, magnetized and uh, we'll take a look at this <clears throat> this is pretty cool this came in while I was doing the cabinet uh, kind of one of my grails if you will that's a uh, cat woman from the Gotham City Garage uh, sitting on an old panhead chopper. That's really cool. And uh, this kind of little neat thing. <clears throat> a little ram. And I got the ram as well. And I thought she looked really cool on this uh, 29 uh, hot rod. So I, uh, I, I found a yellow one on eBay because they, they did make a yellow one and all. I have the ram. So when I get the yellow one, I'll set the uh, rim on that. Even though the scale's not right, I, th I think it works, man. The the outfit they're wearing and uh you know it just looks it looks cool man even though the scale ain't right but there it is there it is got all that so there you have it we're gonna fix her hair we're gonna have to be another video on how to, how to fix that damaged character and there's plenty of videos other people have done on that but we're gonna do one as well but all right we're going to get on to the uh, part two of how this was built. All right, the struggle continues. All right, now what I've done, I've just, to get an idea what this thing's going to look like, because I talked about uh, adjusting the height of these cabinets, uh, shelves, and that's what I'm going to do. Uh, so I've got a quarter inch figure. It's not a bunny. And uh, what I want to do is kind of look with my eyes, what do I like? What do I don't don't like? And, uh, and I boiled it down to two sizes. You basically have a four inch and a three inch. And I kind of going to go with the three inch because <clears throat> if you measure, uh, if you measure, <laughs> if you measure with a tape measure, <laughs> you got. Oops, let me get her sitting in there right. The top of that. Is oh, I'm looking at about 64, about 65 and a half. It's just a little bit taller than sitting on the top of a Detolf. I believe Detolf said that they were 64 and a half to the top uh, off the website. So this would almost be like if you had a Detolf, and then if I put her on that, I think it would be just a little too tall. I mean, that wouldn't be hateful. It's not a real huge difference between that and this. 
um, a three inch or a four inch rise. I went ahead and went with three. Now, let's see, let's take some of this over here. Uh, now that's going to leave a lot of space up here uh, for bunnies, probably about 23 inches uh, for bunnies. So if you're going to have some taller bunnies with more standing straight up with their ears straight up, it's going to leave you a lot of space for that. Um, looking on the website of Solaris Japan and places like that where they give you the sizes, uh, 20 is about the minimum that you're going to want. Uh, so 23 is not bad. It's going to give you a little more space. So we're going to take this out. And I'm going to show you something. Hopefully this will beam up on there a little bit. Let's try there's a little more light here. So. Um, you basically have this little black thing there. Hopefully it's showing on the camera. And if you look at the face of it. Now what I did is I cut from that same 5-8 stock. I cut 3 inch pieces of that stock. I put a notch in it because if you notice um, this too has a notch. Okay. So I match that notch. Yeah, see what I'm saying? I'll show you both sides facing each other. I match the notch in that angle. <clears throat> so that'll fit right on top, just like that. Whoop. That'll sit just like that. And that'll rise the three inches. I made a flat spot there. And I drilled a hole through it. So it goes all the way through. Now my plan is, is I'm going to run... I'm going to set this in there. I'm going to run a bit through that hole and put a little bit of a hole, a little hole, into that steel. Okay. I'm going to run a sheet metal screw through it, a pan head sheet metal screw. Boop. Okay, I'm going to run this pan head sheet metal screw through there and bite into that framework and that's how I'm gonna do it hey holy smokes this thing's fighting me uh, part of the problem might have been I just had the wrong bit tip so let's put a different bit tip in there that's these are smaller screws so I'll follow that up a little bit take some of the burrs off of it Doesn't help I can't see crap because the light's in my eyes. I'm just going to gently go in there. It's just to stabilize it. It ain't got to be locked in there super tight. And bam, there it is. And there it is. So, now we have... Let me see if I can show you what I got. That, that is in there. So, hopefully that showed what I'm doing. Okay, now, as you can see, I've got them both in there. It's just sitting there. Now, what I did find is I put like a little, uh, put a little screw in the bottom. That helped. And I, of course, take my file, um, and by after I scratch the surface, sorry, after I scratch this surface, I hit it with this um, triangle file, and that helped a lot. And this one won in much better than the first one. So I got that in, 
And currently I have this one in there. And so both of them are in there. So that's that's good. Now we just have to put a deal, you know, put this back plate on here and then add our little support back here. And that'll be good. All right, here we are. We are back again. Um, <clears throat> now, as you see, I have the glass in here already. And we are at 16 and a half inches clearance. So from the bottom of this to the bottom edge of that glass. And uh, what I wanted to do, you know, I still got to add more screws here. I just this kind of a couple screws have been put in it. But I want to check it, you know, make sure it ain't flopping and sitting wobbly in there. So, uh, what I did to make that level, well, let's talk a little bit about how I got to this point. Go ahead and take this glass out. <clears throat> now, just a little bit before we get into that, you'll notice I still haven't built a whole lot with this. Or that reason is I don't want to have to build this thing completely and have to do some of these interior work <laughs> while you got glass in here. I don't also want to have to, because I know I'm going to have to take this down, I'm going to have to put the uh, bottom skirt piece, if you will, that's going to help support these legs. I don't want to have to be picking this up and down full weight. So, you know, one of the last things I'm going to do is completely build this thing. I want to make sure I got all these interior pieces and things done that I need. Uh, so what I did, took a straight edge and off that little piece of wood that I had, that's what I, well before this was even here, uh, I took my level and I leveled it and I made a mark. I did repeated the same process over here I made a mark, <clears throat> drew a line, and as you can see, I have this piece of aluminum, L. It's an L shape. I cut it to size, I filed it, and taped it up there, just temporarily taped it up there while I was holding my hand here to keep it from going anywhere because you know, this tape ain't put so strong. Went ahead and laid that glass in there and then did the little tap test, make sure everything was, you know, was going to sit right. Once I was satisfied with that, <clears throat> I went ahead and made marks where I was going to drill my holes. Went ahead and drilled two holes for right now, just to temp it in, and that's where we're at now. So I got three more holes to drill, three more uh, bolts to put in, bolt and nut on the back side. Uh, 1032s, I believe, or 1024s. <clears throat> Whatever goes in a skateboard. <laughs> <laughs> They're skateboard bolts. <laughs> Any skateboarders out there, you know, you know just what I use. <laughs> anyway, um, when we get to that, once we get that, then we're going to take it to the next step. I got these Scotch rubber pads. We're going to put that on there, and I'm just going to lay a few up there. Lay one here, one there, and um, and that'll be that. Uh, other thoughts that I've come up with since discussing doing this, um, you could also, another pro thing that you could do, uh, and I would do this with a hacksaw, I would not do this with any powered um, saws or anything. I would, you know, holding this at an angle, you can make your cuts, your two side cuts. You can repeat these little factory notches that are there. So you take a hacksaw and gently cut where that would go. And you may even take a drill bit, a very small drill bit, and if you're careful, you can make a couple drill holes this way and front to back. Uh, if you have a Dremel tool, you could come in there with a Dremel. But I would be more concerned this way if you cut too deep that you know you're going to weaken this like that. This is not such a big, your, your vertical not such a big deal. Cutting horizontally into this thing, that's where I'd be most concerned. Uh, make sure you don't cut too deep. Um, <clears throat> and that's why I would do that with a hacksaw. 
I would not use a power tool for that. <clears throat> and another thing I thought about, um, so you could do that. But the other thing I thought about, it just kind of came to me, it'd be really cool. Um, you know, because these shells are only good for about 12 pounds. Uh, so it's, you know, as far as plastic figures and anime stuff, man, you could pretty much stack to your heart's content. Uh, it'll handle it. Uh, but there's not really a lot of holding on those little plastic inserts. There's not a lot really holding there, as I mentioned before, I believe. And it wouldn't take a lot to, for that little back piece to snap off and psh, send your shelf crashing. <clears throat> they have, they make a, a, you can buy aluminum or in a, it, it's C-shaped like that. So it's C-shaped. So it's about a quarter of an inch this way and about half inch out, C-shaped. So if you bought two of them, or cut two of them, sorry, say you made a, a cut notch, same way, some kind of cut notch like that, <clears throat> and you cut the end to fit into that notch, okay? And if they were, say this is 30 inches, you cut it dead in half, so you got two 15 inch pieces. Then you take another one that's say 30 inches that won't make it to the edge or it could be as short as 12 and then you have your upper one that's at this this one's actually going into the the side rails and then you have what you would call your coupling piece and you would slide it this way and then from the bottom run screws self cutter tap it screws up into it okay and then you leave that top edge for the glass and you can put your little rubber pieces. <clears throat> so then you would have something structurally strong coming all the way across here. And I guarantee you that would increase your capability, your load capability, beyond 20 pounds. Because I think part of the reason why this thing's only good for 20, because that, that glass is pretty heavy. Um, I, I believe that the rating is only based upon this little plastic piece it's not much but if you were to increase something to bring bring this across here solid like you have here or even factory these you have a solid one coming across here absolutely i think you could probably damn near double that load capacity to probably about 40 pounds of shelf but uh, that's what you that's you know if i were going to do this and i may buy another one if i were you know because i got <clears throat> a lot of porcelain stuff cold cast porcelain heavier pieces um, and I find myself that I need some more cabinet. I would. That's what I would do. I would actually run a bar across like that. I'd probably do those C-shaped bars and make a a coupling piece to and screw it up in there and have it pinned. It would be pinned into the holes. You know, you cut your little holes and have it pinned in there with like little ears on the ends of those C's that could just slide up in there. And uh, I bet you could put a lot a lot more weight on there <clears throat> and the, the part of the problem with this is is there's not a lot of space from the front glass to the side glass you don't have a lot of material here to hang on to just you know to screw something to it so you're not really left with a, a lot of options got to be a little clever there and just like these pieces I made you know this this gonna be a little tough for anybody that's not kind of accustomed to making you know working with tools and stuff and this is kind of something I made off the cuff the more I think about things the more ideas that you know come to me how I probably could have done this a little differently but I'm I'm not mad at how I did that I mean it, it's gonna hold up quite well and I think the <clears throat> because I do have a screw in there even though it's mainly just to keep it from flopping over that's certainly going to strengthen the ability of this shelf. I guarantee you that this shelf, if I wanted to, could hold a lot more than 20 pounds simply because of what I did here, throwing a screw into it and keeping this uh, from allowing this to snap. So I guarantee you this, this shelf probably could hold, who knows, 40 itself, 30, 40 pounds. I'll probably increase the uh, low capacity of this shelf by probably at least 10 pounds. <clears throat> okay, the struggle continues. Alright, I've uh, emptied the case out, I brought it over here, put it up on some wood like this so I can uh, work with it. Uh, these are the boards that I had cut, and 45 cut, I've drilled, 
and I've set uh, yeah, a bunch of uh, counter sinks. I've also made these little devices um, and I've used tight bond, tight bond glue and as the name would imply it's a tight bond <laughs> and that's what the glue that I used um, for the bottom of the other cabinet okay and essentially what I'm going to do with these is they're going to go up there so uh, you don't have to do this this is just me uh, so that sometimes metal shelves will bow you know that's just the way they are sometimes and this will add a little more strength to it if I wanted to put something reasonably heavy down there and as you remember from the earlier uh, bottom section upper upper section bottom of it uh, there was that section there's where your rails would have been in your centerpiece so that's going to sit up underneath right there here's the holes here and here for this there's my marks. I basically set this up there like that, lined it up, made the holes. Um, and what I'm going to do from there is I am going to put some double face tape on this to temporarily just stick it up so I don't have to be mucking around with it. And that's why I'm doing it. Uh, I figure if I'm here making modifications. Might as well just keep on getting it, right? Modify, modify. Let me get in the back, make sure that's fine. Make sure that's where I want it. And that looks good. Let me go ahead and put, put some pressure on that. Okay. That's good. Now, drill bit. Now I got everything I want. Those holes are going to line up, and I'm going to hit that with there. <clears throat> now I want to set this up. Now the reason this is a little higher than the bottom is because it's on carpet. The cabin tends to sink in. I don't want this all grinding into the carpet. So if this was on a wooden floor, I'd probably make this a little wider. So um, uh, judge for yourself, uh, pending your circumstances of where you're going to have it in your home. Okay. Now I'm going to set this up. Uh, so that these inside edges, that 45, that inside edge needs to meet right at the very edge, and so on the other side. So I'm gonna line that up so that your inside edge meets there, just the way you want it. Okay, and I want that. I'm gonna check my doors. They're gonna open. And that's going to open. Okay. With that, we'll help drill a hole. Go ahead. Run a screw in there. And then I'm just going to work my way out. Now the reason I'm doing this, yeah, it's going to be cosmetically a different. It's not going to be open. It's going to be closed. It's because when I do all this, it's going to tie the legs to keep them from moving. Because the additional weight being put on it, that's why I'm tying these legs together. It's it's for structural support for the additional weight sitting down on the cabinet. I don't want those legs moving around, and that's the purpose for this.
Okay, we've got our eight by three quarters. Run that in there. Okay. I believe that's it. Okay, check everything. Check everything. Everything looks good. Oop. Make sure it's just where you want it. Check your doors. And continue the process out, down, and we'll hit these in a second. I'm gonna uh, hit that center, that those supports for the metal. I'm gonna reach up in there and grab that because this it's just taped, so I'm gonna make sure I got a hold of it. I'm gonna run that in with a drywall screw. The second I feel it clench tight, that's it. Don't over torque it. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, about three inches here. I had to move these holes over. I uh, didn't realize that that screw, there's a screw right there uh, that holds this set, uh, side brace on and I'd actually put that right where that damn screw was so uh, had to move that over. Uh, never claimed to be a cabinet maker so <laughs> you know mis mistakes happen, no big deal. Um, but the, it's all screwed in. Uh, and uh, don't worry about the holes. We're going to get to that too. So I know you're thinking, holy cow, there's a lot of freaking holes in that thing. Yeah, don't worry about it. Okay, our door's open. That's good. Now, of course, these sides are going to go on. And we got to check our sides. See how they look. Whoop. Put them on over. Okay. See how that looks with the back. Because these legs ain't square. And that's the whole point of doing this is because, you know, they'll twist and move. Now, you don't necessarily have to put these on there. Uh, you could go and buy a uh, little 45 angle metal and put it here, there, here, and all the way around. You would need one, two, three, four, you'd need eight. You got four legs, you need two of them. One going this way, one going that way, so forth and so on all the way around. So you don't necessarily have to put this, but if you're going to stack, I would definitely uh, heavy up these legs because these legs are already kind of you know, I can already see it by just putting this wood on that they're already wonky. So we're going to continue with this and we'll get right back and see where we're at. Alright, whew, man, that was a, a workout. We got all the pieces in there. Um, it did, I had to go back and make some kind of wonky cuts a little bit there because of the legs were all, you know, it's not all square. So... Uh, I think if I were to do it again, I'd probably avoid the 45 cuts and I would make the front piece come all the way out to here and then the side pieces would butt into it this way and then the back piece would, you know, butt between uh, the two side pieces. Because uh, either way, and I think if I'd have done that, it'd have probably been better because of the wonky legs and I would have been able to you know, hear me trying to cut 45s like you would typically think you should do. Uh, with the legs all, it, it just made things a little hard. So I think I would just do square cuts because at the end of the day, you still got a caulk. You got a caulk. You probably wonder, well, what are you going to do with all this kind of mess? Well, we're going we're gonna to caulk them up and that's what we're going to do. And... Uh, that's that's all we do. You come through here and you just put some caulk in it. <laughs> it's literally that simple. It's probably going to take a couple. Got one's on. Whoo, man, the struggle continues. Um, as you can see, I got all my holes filled. Um, what I would say is, 
don't use this. <laughs> um, I use X simply because I was just a little lazy and feel like going up to the store. That's what I had sitting at the house. So I was going to use that to fill up the cracks, the holes, you know, where the drill holes were. Uh, kind of wish I would have went up and just bought some wood filler or even just grabbed some, you know, Bondo body filler or something. Uh, this stuff was a nightmare to work with. It, it kept shrinking. I had to add to it. It kept shrinking. I had to just keep going on and on and on. So, uh, you know, learn from my mistakes. You know, I don't mind making a mistake, so... <clears throat> learn them teach show them to you that way you don't have to make them uh, make your project go a little better so anyway it's done I'm satisfied with that I'm gonna go ahead and just put a little bit of uh, uh, primer on it and uh, we're gonna paint this up and put her back in her little zone I've already built the uh, the other cabinet sitting right here behind me she's pretty much ready to go uh, stack everything together and uh, put the wraps on this thing and um, right now I'm working on the uh, trim pieces that would otherwise go for the top and bottom cabinets I've, I've painted two coats on them now I want to have this so that I can move it so I don't want to have to zap these things in with screws and paint over it to where the cabinet becomes one whole cabinet um, if you ever had to move it it would be a pain so I want to be able to pull it apart move it in two halves, be able to put it back together again, so it has to be somewhat mobile. Um, <clears throat> so what I propose to do, I mean you could use Velcro or something of that nature, I've chose to use magnets. And as you see, I've already put a couple magnets in it, and I've already uh, drilled a hole, uh, holes, with a, a bit like this, it's a kind of a squared off bit. I believe these magnets are 3 8 inch. And what I want to do, I'm going to set this board down here like this. Okay. I'm going to take my E6000. Okay. I'm going to fill that hole up. Okay. Alrighty, got that hole filled up with E6000. I'm gonna take my magnet. I'm gonna take my magnet. Son of a bitch. <laughs> I'm gonna take my magnet. <laughs> Let me see. Yeah, let's put a little bit more E6000 in there. A little bit more. Okay. All right, I'm gonna. Jesus, I'm gonna just get it started because it doesn't actually fit in there. It doesn't just sloppily fit in there. Okay, I'm gonna take a scrap piece of wood, I'll lay it over top. I'm gonna take a C clamp. down now you ain't got to over crank it once you feel the bottom out back it up as you can see glue is oozing out that's what I want as you see I have all six of them now so if you can see, can you see? Yeah. Let's look over here just to the side. There you have it. That's a pretty good grip. And that's how we're going to put these trim pieces up. Okay, we're pretty much wrapping it up. As you can see, it's all painted. And, uh, come around here. <coughs> you see it's... And, uh... These are my cables. Now I have this uh, transformer. This is, I have it basically double face taped, refrigerator magnets, and it's 
It's not bad. It'll probably stay there. But what I'm gonna do. I am going to put some 200 mile there duct tape on it. You ain't never gonna see it anyway. There. That'll definitely hold it. It's back there, nobody cares. Good enough for NASCAR, good enough for me. Yeah, that should stay on there. And then basically what I'm gonna do, you see right here, I've gathered it up. And I'm gonna splice to that from the uh, other cabinet. It's gonna splice right here. I'm gonna do the same thing I did right there with the barrels. Right there. So that's how that's gonna play out. So I'm pretty much ready uh, to push this thing into place and uh, start putting it together. Woo! It's late at night, but there it is. The Mega Mod, you gotta excuse the mess. Got the Mega Mod cab. She is complete. She is lit. And there it is. The Mega Mod cab. Oh, yeah. Can't wait to clean her up and uh, start loading her up. Yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, now that'll conclude this video on how I built the IKEA Rudsta Mega Modified Cab. Um, if you stuck with me to the end, thank you. Uh, for all those who subscribe, thank you. And if you like what you see, hit that bell and subscribe. And uh, if you haven't seen the first video, do check that out. There is a two-part video on how I made this cabinet. And we'll catch you on the next one.